Welcome to the perfect Pokemon production video. We're going to go through selecting a Pokemon and then taking it through to being a strong asset on your team. This is fairly late in the game. Most of the items and things that we will be using don't become available until you have at least six badges. And this can be quite expensive as well. So if you're going to do this, make sure you get the amulet coin and start using it as soon as you can. I'm going to say if eventually, especially if you want to go into high level raids, you're going to need to do this anyway. So make sure you get the amulet coin from this guy. You need to face all of the trainers around this West Province Area 3. There's two along each road. You'll need to do five, though. Just make sure you've got that because you are going to need money. When I say need money, I mean like 600k money. Lots of money to, uh, to do this properly. Once you have those six badges, we can now start discussing effort values. This is probably the most confusing concept of what we're going to be talking about here. And I'm not going to get too far into the numbers. I'm just going to show you guys the graph and how we manipulate it. Because otherwise, I feel like it's going to get way too complicated. So we're on our summary screen here and we want to go over to our moves and stats and if we press the left bumper, I don't know what it's called on the controller, I think it's just L, you can see now we have like a shadowed marker and a light marker as we go down here and you can see they're kind of different on each of the Pokemon. So the darker one which is the one that's underneath, those are the individual values, that's the natural stats that your Pokemon has. They can also be changed to some extent but we don't have as much control over those as we do the effort values which is is the lighter number that you can see. The way this works is, generally speaking, as you battle Pokemon, each Pokemon that you defeat has an effort value that is taken into account and then develops over time as you continue defeating them into extra stats. So generally speaking, as you can see on these bottom ones here, these are Pokemon that I've taken on my adventures with me and they have quite, I mean, we have a lot of attack coming out of most of the Pokemon that we've been facing, but they are they're quite mediocre in terms of how far they progressed in each particular stat. Whereas when we look at Goldengo here, whom I have manipulated the effort values on, you can see that they're much more extreme and much more controlled, and this guy is clearly going to be a fast special attacker. That's what we've gone for there. So the way that we can manipulate this is, before your Pokemon has had too many battles, we need to go to a drugstore, I mean medicine store, to get some medication to increase your performance. Now this is the chance eats shop. With your six badges when you come in here, you are going to see the HP up protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and Carbos, and they all boost each of those stats that we were looking at a second ago by a certain amount. I already have a few in stock, but this is where it gets expensive. To reach the maximum on one individual stat, it's going to cost about 26 of them, and we can max out two on each Pokemon, and then have one left over for a small boost on one extra stat. If we take what I'm going to make my next Pokemon and bring it into my party here, I've decided that I'm going to do an Electros, and as we can see, it doesn't have any IVs. All of that is still right in the middle. And we can see from its stats, it's a fairly middle-of-the-road attack, so it can choose between being a heavy special attacker or physical attacker. I'm going to choose to make mine a special attacker because I want it to have a cover move in Giga Drain, which will make it fairly tough. Electros has no weakness, effectively, because it is immune to ground-type moves, which is an electric-type Pokemon's only weakness. So if we give it Giga Drain, not only will it be not be taking any super super effective damage, it will also be able to heal itself on the fly as it attacks. That's my plan. This Pokemon is also kind of slow, so we're not going to be concentrating on speed, we'll concentrate on being tanky with HP. Now it does have the wrong nature for this, and this is something that we're also going to fix. But to start out then, I want to boost its special attack. So we're going to go into our bag here, find our calcium, which boosts special attack, and we're just going to use them all on my Tynamo. Now as you see here, it won't let you go above the maximum amount that you can use on the stat. And just so you guys can see it in action, we now have a rather large looking spike over on our special attack stat. I'm going to do the same again for my HP. And now that I've done that, if I pick any of these other ones, apart from the PP up, this boosts the amount of moves you get. Uh, say I decide, you know what, maybe I'll have one extra stat in speed, why not? Right, I can only use one. If I press left and right, it's not going to let me change that number. We've got one point left, which is kind of irrelevant. That's fine. Pretty happy with how that's looking. We've got some nice stars there, look, because we've got some pretty nice looking stats there, especially for a low level Pokemon. It's probably a bit crazy. The next thing that we're going to want to do then is to change the effects of our Pokemon's nature on its stats which isn't as time sensitive as the stats that we've just improved as these won't be affected by future battles. Now that we've maxed out the EVs, it doesn't matter what we do, those cannot change. This is why this is where you want to start because if we start trying to level this up before we've done this, it's going to get EVs all over the place and as you guys will see when we get to the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys how we can take EVs back out of stats. It's much more difficult to take them out than it is to put them in. Either way, the next thing we want to do is fix 
the bonus and detrimented stats from its nature. So it's giving a boost to physical attack and we don't want that. In addition, we don't really want it to have a lowered special defense either because we're expecting it to get hit. So what we want to do next is go to the bottom half of Chansey's supply place and start looking at these mints. So we want something that's going to give a special attack for a stat that we don't care about. Now I just said we really don't care about speed. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with, we're going to go slow. We know we're going to get hit and we know we're going to go last. So let's just lean into it, which means that we want a quiet mint. So we'll get this used. It's going to warn us its stats are going to change. I believe it was on 46 special attack before and now it's on 50. We've gained an extra four. How nice. Okay, so we've got the very first part that we want to have done fixed here. If you are not at the very end of the game, you can now just go around and level this up and it will be fine. At level 50, we can move on to the next portion. Now, what I've been doing is making sure I've got a high level Pokemon at the top here. I'm probably going to switch Skeledurge out because it can't level anymore. And I've been repeating the end game tournament. So the reason I've been doing this is because as we are now leveling, we'll be regaining the cash that we are spending on the Pokemon and turning this into a conveyor belt because this was the first one that I did, right? But each time a Pokemon reaches the top, basically in levels, we take it out, we switch another low level Pokemon into the bottom and just work them up and we can just keep on belt feeding Pokemon into our squad and get as many different Pokemon powered up as we like. This is important because of the terror raids because typing is going to matter a lot because of you're going to have to consider th almost three different typings before you go into a raid battle and make sure you select the right one as you're going to be facing level 90 to 100 Pokemon in there. So you have to be making the correct decision when it comes to the Pokemon. Okay, so our Pokemon's coming along. It evolved whilst we were leveling up to 50. I also fed it a Thunderstone so that we can finish off the evolution chain. But now that we've reached level 50 with our Pokemon, whichever one it is that we've got in training, you can see, obviously, the EVs have not changed, as I said earlier. Um, I just want to make sure I'm hammering that point home. And now that we are level 50, we can kind of finish off all of the modi modifications and stuff that we need to do to get its stats just going in the direction we want. Now, you're going to want to come to one of these Delibird Presents, and we're going to go into the General Goods. And right at the very top here, again, I believe this appears when you have six badges as well, we have the Bottle Cap. For each one of these, we can take a Pokemon's IVs to maximum. Now, on a sweeping Pokemon, which I would say is a Pokemon that causes mm, as much damage as possible with high speed, we could probably get away with two because you just need high speed and enough attack power to one-shot most of your opponents. This Pokemon's a little slower, so it's likely to take hits, so we need to make sure its defenses are yes. also up and that, that its HP is up. So we need one for HP, one for its attack stat, one for each of the defenses. So we're going to take all of those. And just in case you need help finding where these shops are, if you go onto your map, zoom all the way in, you'll see that we have all of the store icons come up, and this one, Delibird Presents is right here. There isn't one in the town that we're going to be going to, which is where we started, called Montenevera, which does in fact have the Chansey Supply Shop. I wish it had both. This is where we're going to spend the bottle cap, so we're going to go there now. And once we arrive, we're pretty much at the Pokemon Center right now, just on the opposite side. We have this guy with the Obama Snow, and he says, Hyper Training, get it here. So we're going to go talk to this guy. He's going to say, do you want some Hyper Training? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go. And then we're going to select the Pokemon that we want to boost, so this one. Now, you're not actually going to be able to see this very well, but you see, I have the Judge function. You get this towards the end of the game and you can't actually see what your Pokemon stats look like. So you can see I've got like average stats across the board. We've got decent, 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 very good. I've got no bad ones, but no good ones. So the special attack right now is 168. We'll see what that looks like in a second. So we can use bottle caps. We don't have any gold ones. They are like a rare prize from the raids and a gold one will boost all of them. So we're going to go with HP. We're going to go with special attack and both defenses. Normal attack is going to be irrelevant to us and this thing's going last anyway. So we don't really care about that. Cool. So with our hyper training done then, our stats are going to look more like this. It's now on to 179, which is a pretty nice boost at level 52. And now it's just going to be a matter of finishing off its leveling, getting it to 100. Okay, and so to finish off with Electros, let's give it some new moves from our TMs. There's a couple of things that I want to get on there, with the first one being Giga Drain. We already spoke about this, but this gives it type coverage against rock and ground and gives it a self-heal, being as it is going to be taking hits. That's going to be pretty good for us. We're a special attacker, so Thunderbolt should be pretty obvious. And I quite like the idea of having Volt switch on it. That's going to mean that this will do really well in the front of your squad. You can start out with an attack and then pick a new Pokemon to get out in its place. And then depending on what you want out of it, you could do something like Brick Break so you can remove enemy barriers. You can actually take Reflect or we could take Dragon Pulse. So uh, I'll leave that one up to you guys, whatever you want to take. So then from now, as I said earlier, just to make sure this is clear, the plan here to keep on getting all of these Pokemon to a high level and as many as you want really is basically we'll just filter these through. So I'll keep on going through the tournaments now. What does Garchomp hint? 
it's like 100. Goldengo should be high enough to take its spot on the top. I'm keeping Skeledurge in as like backup. And then we can pick another Pokemon to put in and take its place. We can just literally keep on feeding Pokemon through. Let's move on to what to do with your main adventure Pokemon. The ones that you've taken through all of the game. You probably fell in love with them, especially your starter. And it's got stats all over the place. So we need to fix them. What we need is a certain type of berry. You probably picked some up. If you go into your bag, go over to your berry pouch and come down a little bit. It should start with the Pomeg berry. We can see here, look, if a Pokemon is fed this berry, we'll lower its base points for its HP stat. So these ones here are the ones that are basically going to work like the opposite to the vitamins that we've been using previously. So let's take a look at a Pokemon that we want to fix. So let's take Skeledurge here and let's say, look at all the, look at all those EVs and attack which are useless. This is a heavily special attacker. So we're going to take all of those attack EVs off. So for that, I'm going to come down to my Kelpsy berries. I'm going to come on to my Skeledurge here. This probably won't take all of them off. These do seem to be less effective than when you're actually adding them on. But now when we go and see Skeledurge's stats here, we can see that the attack is almost entirely reduced. And now I can go ahead and use my vitamins to boost it to where I want it. Put some calcium on there. And now now Skeledurge is looking ruthless with its 342 special attack and its EV looking pretty much maxed out there. Pretty good. Unfortunately, there isn't a great way to farm these berries. The passive way is to pick up all of the shiny spots that you see all over the ground and you'll get them randomly. The less random way to get them, which is still quite random, is they can be sold by the auctioneers over in Porto Miranada. So if we just take a jump down to the auction area, this guy here on the southern side of this little corridor thing will sell various different things and obviously we have to bid for this hondu berries let's see if we've got any of those see what they do but yeah the hondu berry is one of the types that we would actually want to get look because this is going to reduce special attack so pretty good if we want to like be powering up a physical attack for example like lucario or anyone like this now if he's not selling what you want and i'm going to re-roll this even though this would have been a good thing for me to buy you are going to want to save in front of him and take a save here you're going to want to close your game down and then change your date setting to forward one day we actually only need to do this once so just go on in here i'm gonna make this another day forward from where the save was and then when we come back in he's now selling something else now he has like mega random things he can be selling outside of berries but because we're now already forward one day from the save we can literally just keep on re-rolling this by exiting the game and reloading which is not ideal i guess it depends on how you want to go about reconfiguring the stats of your pokemon you could do it piecemeal as you pick up the berries or you could come here and do it specifically note this is why we started with using all of the vitamins before so that really you'll only have to do this with your adventure Pokemon that you kind of start out with. If you just max out all of your EVs right at the very beginning for every Pokemon you pick up from now, you'll never have to do it again. So at least it's something that once it's over, it's done. There's one last item we should probably talk about in terms of customizing your Pokemon. That is the ability capsule. I feel like it's oppressively expensive, so I don't really recommend it in most cases, unless we're talking about a legendary or a shiny or something that's going to be difficult to get a replacement for. Basically what this does is if your Pokemon has two different abilities that it could have, if you use this, it'll give it the other ability. Something useful to know about, but most people probably won't use it.